Today, I'm going to break down exactly what an AI agent is in the simplest way possible, how it thinks, how it takes action, and I'll show you how to build one yourself in minutes using NAN. By the end, you'll understand the moving parts, how to give it memory, connect it to tools, and even set it up so it can email people from your contact list automatically. Think of an AI agent as a small software worker that can understand instructions, decide what to do, and take action with tools you give it. There are four core pieces that make this happen. One is the brain, the LLM. This is the model. Think OpenAI GPTs, Claude. It's it's the model that interprets your requests, plans steps, and writes responses. The brain you choose will depend on how smart, fast, and costly you need your agent to be. The trade-off is that bigger models equal better reasoning but are slower and more expensive, whereas smaller models are faster and cheaper for routine tasks. The brain also doesn't know your environment by default. It needs instructions, memories, and tools to be useful. Kind of like, imagine a ship's captain with no maps, no compass, and no crew. The captain might be skilled, but without the tools and information, they're probably not getting very far. Two is memory. Memory keeps conversations coherent and lets the agent reference past context. Just like us, the agent can have short-term and long-term memory. With short-term, there's a rolling window of recent messages, which is ideal for a chat or quick task. Long-term involves external storage, a vector database or spreadsheet for facts like names, emails, preferences, past actions. Without memory, chatting with an agent would be like having a conversation with a goldfish. Everything resets every few seconds. In our example agent we'll build in a bit, we're going to give it a context window of about five messages. So if you ask it, what's my name, it'll remember. All right, step three, instructions, also called the system message or prompt. Think of this as the agent's job description and playbook. You want to clearly spell out a few key things. First, the role. For example, you're a friendly assistant, then the scope, what it can do and what it can't do. Next, the tools. List each tool by name and explain what it's for. Also, the style, the tone you want it to use, maybe even how it should sign off messages. And finally, the output format. Good instructions are gold. They reduce mistakes, they tell the agent when to ask clarifying questions, and they make his behavior consistent every time you use it. Step four, tools, sometimes called actions or APIs. Think of tools as the hands of the agent, the things it uses to actually do stuff. This could be sending emails, updating spreadsheets, managing a CRM, running web searches, you name it. Here's how it works. The brain of the agent decides which tool to use, and then it fills in the details, like the recipient, subject, and body of an email. You're the one who decides which tools are available to the agent. Fewer, well-defined tools make it much easier for a new agent to use them reliably. Too many tools can overwhelm the agent, just like how giving a toddler every toy in the house at once usually ends with a mess and nothing actually gets played with. So now that I've gone over the four key pieces of an agent, we can move on to the agent loop. This is what actually happens behind the scenes. It goes like this. Input, understand, plan, act as in use the tools, observe the result, respond, and remember. Here's what that looks like in practice. You say, email Jessica that the meeting's been pushed to 3 p.m. The agent's brain reads your instructions and realizes it might need Jessica's email address. If it has a contact tool, it looks Jessica up. If not, it asks you directly for the address. Then it calls the Gmail tool with the subject and body, checks if the send was successful, and confirms back to you something like email sent to Jessica. Finally, it updates its short-term memory so that if you later say, tell her it's now at 4 p.m., it knows exactly who you mean. And here is exactly how that use case would look in NAN. NAN, if you don't already know, is a no-code workflow automation platform that is very easy to learn. Instead of coding, you can drag and drop nodes to create custom automations and AI agents. I tried to structure it similarly to this diagram and included notes, but in reality, these nodes could be anywhere. See? So over here is the input. Our chats get sent directly to this agent node, which also has our custom instructions in the form of a system prompt. Then. Our brain is an open AI model connected here. Next, our memory is just a simple memory node with an arbitrary context length of five so that our model remembers what the last five messages were. And lastly, we have our tools. Like I said, the agent will need people's contact information to send emails. So we connect this Google Sheets tool so it can access our contact database and this Gmail tool so it can send emails. And as for the output, the agent will respond back in the same chat that we used to message it. And by the way, this is the built-in chat we use to communicate with our AI agent. So hopefully you're kind of starting to get a grasp on how this works, but if not, that's okay because we're going to build this agent step by step and I'll show you how to create and configure each one of these nodes in the simplest way possible. Here we are on the NAN dashboard and if you don't already have it downloaded I have a video on how you can set this up on your computer for free using Docker. You can also host it on the cloud and pay a hosting fee. It's up to you where you want to host it. Personally I do it locally on my computer so that it's free. 
To create a new workflow, you'll click this button up top. And here we are inside of our new workflow and we can name it whatever we want by clicking up here. To move around this area, you'll use your scroll wheel and to zoom in and out, you'll hold control key and use your scroll wheel like that. Don't let all of these buttons overwhelm you. The only thing you really need to focus on is the plus icon up top and this drawer down here, which is where our logs will be displayed from our executions. And it's also where the chat will be once we add that node in. When you click the plus icon, you'll see a list of triggers that are available for us to use. And just like it says up top here, a trigger is a step that starts your workflow. If you're curious about anything, there's usually a description. Just to go through these really quickly, we'd use this trigger manually node if we wanted the workflow to start when we click a button. And we'd use this on a schedule node if we wanted it to start at a certain time in the future or at a certain time every day. In our case, we want it to start when we send a chat, so we use this on chat message node. So that created this chat node here. And if we open the drawer, you'll see this chat area that we can now use to send messages. So I'll say, hey, and if we wanted to reset the chat, we just click this button here. Our next step is to add the agent node. So let's click the plus icon again. And here you'll see that the list has changed from only triggers to any node that we want. We can use the search bar to find a node or we can find it using these menus. So I'll click AI and then AI agent. And so our AI agent node is down here. So let's move it back up here and connect it to the chat trigger like this. Now, when we send a message, it'll be sent directly to the AI agent, but there's an issue because we haven't connected a chat model. And as we know, the chat model is the brain of the agent. So to add that, you'll click this plus icon here and there'll be a list of models we can connect to like Anthropic, DeepSeek, Olama, but for today, we're going to choose the OpenAI chat model. But obviously, you can choose whichever one you want. The OpenAI GPT models are well-rounded, and that's what I prefer to use in most of my automations. OpenAI is an external service, and like with any external service we use in NAN, we need to create and connect with a credential. So click Create New Credential. And here we see we need an API key. This is basically like a password that will allow this NAN agent to connect to your OpenAI account and use the service. To get this API key, you'll want to go to openai.com and log in. So create an account. Once you create an account, you'll create a project within the API platform and you'll need to add some billing information and credits to your account in order to use the API. So you can go to billing and add some credits here. It can be something small like $5. I've added $5 like a month ago and I've only used like a dollar of it. After that is done, you can go to API keys and create a new secret key and name it whatever you want and then select the project and click create secret key and here is your api key now you want to copy this and put it in your notes or somewhere secure because once you close this modal you won't be able to view it again okay so copy that and paste it into this api key field then click save and in a second you'll see connection tested successfully now we can close the modal we're good to go and now we can choose the model from this list. We have any model we want from OpenAI. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the GPT-5 mini. Uh, GPT-5 just came out, and so I'm gonna take advantage of that, uh, but I don't wanna use the base model. I'm gonna use something that's a bit less expensive. Now, if I was doing important research with the agent or generating important emails, I'd probably use a beefier model like GPT-5. Again, it all depends on your use case, but today we're just using a couple of simple tools, so it, the GPT-5 mini should do the trick. So now that we have that connected, let's send another chat. And our AI agent now has access to the model, so it's gonna be able to respond to us. Hey, how can I help you today? Nice. I'm gonna tell it my name. I'll say, hey, my name is Kyle. And then I'm gonna say, what's my name? And as you can see, it does not know our name, even though we just told it. So that's a clear sign that the agent doesn't have built-in memory. You have to add that yourself. So we'll click the plus icon under memory and this list will show up. We'll choose the simple memory node. And you can see here, there's a context window length defaulted to five, and that's gonna be good for our use case. That means uh, it'll remember the previous five messages that were in this chat here. Let's give that another test. I say, hey, my name is Kyle. It says, hi, Kyle. I say, what's my name? And it says, your name is Kyle. So the simple memory is working. Real quick, let's take a look at these logs. What's cool about NAN is that every time an execution takes place, a log will be created for each step, showcasing the input and the output. These are the logs from the run that we just finished. It started with the chat message and the output includes our chat input. And in the AI agent, we see the input and then each step that the AI agent took. So it checked the simple memory, then it queried the chat model 
and then it updated the simple memory with the new context. This comes in handy when you're curious about how the data is flowing, and if you run into an issue, you can easily debug it by checking these logs. Anyway, the next thing we'll do is add the contact database tool. This tool will get the rows from a Google Sheet where we store people's contact information. Here's what the sheet will look like. We've got a first name, last name, and email, and this could be however many rows long, but I've only got three friends, John, Aria, and Samwa. So we'll go back to NAN and click this plus icon under tool. And you can see we have access to all of these tools here. There's a lot. Um, so we're going to search the one we need, which is Google Sheets, Google Sheets tool. And so again, we're going to need a credential to connect with, but this time it'll be for the Google account instead of OpenAI account, right? So click create new credential and you see we need a client ID and client secret, which are similar to an ABI key. So go to the Google cloud. And if you don't already have an account in the Google cloud, then create one and then go to the console, create a project in the cloud, click into it, go to credentials, create a consent screen, then click create credentials, a Wolf client ID, select the web application and fill out this form um, and add this URI, copy it from here, paste it in and click create. Now you'll want to copy your client ID and client secret and put them somewhere secure like your notes, because once you close this modal, you won't be able to see the client ID or client secret again. Copy and paste these into NAN, then go to OAuth consent screen, click audience and click add users and then type in your email here. Then sign in with Google back here and choose that same email. Click continue, give it access to all the services it needs. Click continue. And it should say connection successful and account connected and you're good to go nan is awesome because it lets you choose from this list here it'll load your drive and you can choose that sheet you were just in and choose the tab if we execute the step you see we get all the rows here john snow aria stark and sam Tarley. if you're having trouble getting that google credential set up go ahead and check out this video here and i go over it more thoroughly Anyway, we can go create our Gmail tool now since we need to actually send an email. So search Gmail tool, click it and connect a new credential and use the same client ID and client secret. And there you go. The resource is message and the operation is send. You could also have this node just draft an email instead of sending it right away. And you could also do any one of these operations. I'm sure you're thinking of many different use cases for this node. There's a lot you could do with it. This to field is where we define the email that we want the message to be sent to. And since we're asking the agent to find the email from the contact list, we need the agent to input this field. So choose let agent define this parameter. We're also letting the agent generate the subject and body. So we'll do the same for these fields. This is what you call making fields dynamic instead of hard coding them to just one static value. And also make sure the email type is text and we're good to go. Things are looking a bit messy now. So let's use this little button down here called tidy up. And there we go, it organized everything. It's good practice to save your project every now and again, because if your browser closes, you're gonna lose all your progress. It's also good practice to name your nodes. So let's go in here and name these based on what they do. Um, get contacts and then send message or send email, okay? So we've got the model slash brain, we've got the memory and we got the tools. The last thing to do is to add the instructions. So let's go into the AI agent and add a system message. The default here is you are a helpful assistant. The model is usually smart enough to run and use these tools on its own without having instructions, but it's important to add instructions for consistent results, especially if you plan on making your workflow production ready. Like I said earlier, there are important elements of a system prompt that make it consistent and reduce mistakes. The message here implements all of those elements. You've got the role, you've got the scope, You've got the tools, you have the style, and then you define the output format. So this prompt tells the agent exactly what it is, what it can and can't do, the tools it has, the tone it should use, and how it should format its responses. That way, it always stays on tasks, just looking up contacts and sending emails, and gives me clear confirmations before taking any action. And I'll tell it to use my name when signing off the emails. So now it is time to test the agent. Let's open up the chat here and say, Send a message to Jon Snow telling him that winter is coming and so we should reschedule the weekly team sync. Okay, let's send that off. So the model is thinking and it's getting the contacts. That's good. 
Okay, it tells us what the email will say and it's telling us to reply yes to send the email and I think that looks good. So let's say yes and the email was sent. So let's go check. Here we go. John Snow at gmail.com just got our message. Winter is coming, so we need to reschedule our weekly team sync. Could you, share, could you share two to three time slots that work for you next week and I'll update the invite. So yeah, not only was this message completely generated by an AI agent, but that agent was able to look up the contact information based off a name we sent it, and then it was able to send the email by itself. It's really cool what you can do with these things. Back in NAN, another thing to note is the executions view. This allows you to see all the times the workflow is executed and you can see the logs for each of these. So real quick, let's walk through what happened. Technically two executions happened for that email to be sent because it needed our approval before sending. So for this first execution, the chat gets sent to the AI agent and we can see it here. It's saying, send a message to Jon Snow. Our simple memory is checked for that context to be sent to the chat model along with our system prompt and the new user message. It realizes it needs to get the contacts, so it uses the get contacts tool and gathers a list of all the contacts, right? It sends them back to the model where a email copy is then generated and then the system memory is then updated and that email copy is sent to us for approval. And lastly, we'll look at this final execution where the chat input is yes. So the agent has no idea why we're saying yes, so it needs to look at the simple memory to get that context, and it sends the simple memory context along with the system the system prompt with the instructions and that yes confirmation, and realizes it needs to send the email that it already generated. So it uses the send email tool. Once that email is sent, the chat model will think if there's anything else to do, and there isn't, so it updates the memory and then gives us a response here. So now you've seen exactly how an AI agent can take a simple request, grab the right contact, write an email, and send it, all without you lifting a finger. And this is just one example. You could adapt this workflow to send reminders, follow-ups, or even run entire processes automatically. If this helped you to understand how AI agents work in NAN, give it a try and see what you can build. I've got more videos coming that dive deeper into adding live data, more complex tools, and making your agents even smarter, so subscribe if you don't want to miss those. Also, check out my video about hosting OpenAI models locally so that you don't have to pay for using the API. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.